and it's just like I'm watching England now, nowadays, and there's like someone that looks like me on the pitch. Wasn't that how you realised that you were affected by dementia when it was with a, a, a completely different industry? I think a plumber. You were, you were. Working. Yeah, I was working in the water, water, water works. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Thinking, and you so. and so as you were kind of, I think it was during COVID, you were in a bubble, so decided to rewatch the Rugby World Cup and all the games, and you were realising that you weren't. None of it was clocking, clocking in with yeah, you, and the, I, there was no emotion with it. <clears throat> yeah, I was sharing a house with a, a lad that I was, we were working with, and uh, Sean, and he said, oh, you, you must remember this, you must... And I was... I can't even remember being there. And people say, even when people are talking to me now about it, they say, oh, you must remember this point in the match. And I, was, I'm, I can't even remember having a cup of coffee in Australia. I can't remember being there. I can't remember that time in my life at all. There's, like, you know, ten years of my life that's just not there at all. And had your family noticed? that you were forgetting or not recalling certain parts of your life? Yeah, there were, and <clears throat> I was coming up with ways of, and good friends of mine, I've come up, because they started saying, look, you're just repeating yourself. You said that last time you saw me. And that, so I'd start saying, oh, I know I've told you this. And, then I'd, and so I was trying to mask over it. And my work, I was over in Dubai, and I was working in the construction industry there. And I was going into meetings, coming out, thinking, I don't even know what I've just talked about there. It just gone. So that part of my life started falling apart. And then my emotional sort of state started going bad as well. And I was like ups and downs. And I just, I didn't know what was going on with me. I didn't have a clue. I didn't even think anything to do with rugby at all. I just didn't know. At some stage, I thought, oh, is it my age? But I'd have only been in my late 30s then. But I just thought, well, you're still oh, a baby old. now, no offense. You're 42? Three. 43. 43, just, yeah. So, what got you to the stage where you or your family thought, we need to check this out? This is more than just being a bit forgetful or thoughtless as it may have come across? It was, it was an ex-player that I played with, Alex Popham, who's been unbelievable, to be honest, for all this. And uh, he phoned me up and I was, it was during COVID, I was out in the middle of a field and he said to me, oh, can you, uh, have you got a few minutes to talk? I said, yeah. And then he started explaining to what he was going through at the time, memory loss, emotional changes, everything like that. And I was thinking, he's just explaining to me, like saying what I'm like at the moment. So I, I said, he said, look, why don't you go and get tested? And I, I was, at first, I was like, in denial, no, I don't need to, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then suddenly I went back, spoke to Steph, my wife, and she was like, I think you really need it. And I said, what? what? And then suddenly got what do you mean, what do you mean? And she was like, well, you have changed a bit. And, you know, she, she explains it, it's like the light's gone out of me a little bit, majority of the time, which, you know, is quite hard to hear at times. Um, so then I went and got tested, and it was during one of the tests I did, and they, they say 20 words to you, and then you have to repeat back to them. And... Then you do another memory test, then you go back to the same, she'll repeat the, the 20 words and then I'll repeat them. And my top score was something like five. And I must admit, I broke down because that was the point where it hit me. I'm in trouble here, like mm. this, this is real. Um, and even until, and then what I found out after that, the doctor interviewed Steph and Steph's nan died of dementia the year before that. And Steph, when in the interview, she turned around and said, oh, it's really weird, but it's as if he's got dementia, but I know he hasn't because he's too young. Because that's what everyone was thinking, you know. Um, and it's only until now we've realised that you can get dementia and how many people are suffering with it at a young age. Um, and especially coming forward now that Alex and myself and everyone are explaining our stories that, you know, there's hundreds coming forward now that are really suffering. You've got children, haven't you? Yes, yeah. What, what age are they? Uh, nine. It's not a test. Sorry, no, 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 that's no, no. me to do Nine, that. there's two years between nine, seven, five and three. Oh, you've got lots of kids. And I, I can only imagine, we, we were drawing attention to you not recognising yourself in a picture of the World Cup. But it gets much more personal, I suppose, when you must be... I, I don't know, how's your memory of them when they were younger, all those well, it's things? Well, it's, it's like things are disappearing completely. Like, the, <clears throat> even the other day we were talking... Um, it was our 10th wedding anniversary and Steph made me a, a pina colada. And so we drank, and she's like... Don't you remember this? And I'm like, no, I said, it's nice though, what is it? And that was our, we got married in Vegas, and that was our wedding drink. And, that was, and it, it didn't have a, a tie to it at all. That had gone. But when I speak to my friends, I know that I've known about that because they've said, oh, no, you've told me about that. And this is what's happened, like the birth of the children. <clears throat> the day before, and everyone's laughs, you know, what happens, you know, what, when Steph went into labour and all, all that's just, it's just going, it's just slowly disappearing. But what is weird, when I was younger, I can remember a lot of that, and it's clear. I mean, I'm getting a big nostalgia for 70s and 80s music, and it's like smells. And you know, there's a, a Dr. Gavin Newby who's, to be honest, saved my life because I've been close to suicide a few times at times, and I've gone onto medication now. And you know, I, I talk about it because 
I was one of these people when we were younger, when I was younger, I thought people with mental health, I thought it was rubbish, I thought they were weak, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. And when we were younger, there was people's, and we used to, it sounds awful, we called them the happy pills. And people's parents were on them, and they were spaced out, they weren't with it at all, and I was one of them, so I was really against it, and I was like, I'm, I'm never going to do that, I'm never... But to give... I've had my life now, that's why I look at it, and it's for my kids and for other people around me, I want to just be level and just try and get the best out of me I can now to make them have a better life. Well, it's a very brave thing you're doing, <clears> you know, being so open about everything now. I can only imagine how, when you... If you watch rugby now, they've got bigger. I mean, you're a big guy, but they've got bigger, they've got faster, they've got stronger, the collisions are bigger. What goes through your mind when you see that now and about, if, if at all, whether you think the sports... And this goes across a number of sports as well, whether they're better at the concerns over injuries. Uh, well, you know, the big thing for me, yeah, there's a lot of money in sport now and the governing bodies, they've got a duty of care to look after the people involved in it. Um, and there's been study out there for 100 years on concussions and, you know, punch drunk syndrome and CTE and, and they've got to do the best to look after the players involved and it has got bigger, it has got stronger. Do they need to play as many games? The concussion protocols have to be seriously looked at and, you know, if people got to sit out for three, four, five, six weeks, they've got to do that rather than six days at a professional level. Because you would have played at a time when, if you got a knock, you, you, someone probably would have said, just carry on. Yeah. Or maybe you would have said, I'll just carry on. Well, no, they just, the big thing was that if you got a knock to the head especially, it was like, you know, thank goodness you haven't pulled your hamstring because you can play on. And that's the way it was looked at and, and that's... I think I read that um, in your book <clears throat> that during training sessions, if you were, were knocked out, it would be, I'll... He's just having a little nap. It's one of his regular naps, and they just wait for you to get up and carry on. Yeah, and that's you know, and, and that's what I've learnt from people talking to good friends that I was training with at the time as well. That they said, you know, it happened quite frequently. That you're there, you sort of come to, and you have like a nice, it's, it's like a sensation of a nice dream, and then you come and then you just carry on training. And it was just like yeah. that's just part of yeah, the training. Just, yeah, it's just what happens. Yeah. You know, and um, Charlie brought up, brought up your children. Um, you wouldn't let your children play rugby at this moment in time? No, we go down to the local junior club, Wellington, and it's fantastic. You know, people involved in rugby are amazing, and all these parents that take, take so much time out to look after children and train children on a Sunday are amazing people. But we're just trying to make aware and make it safe for everyone. Do I believe that children at a young age should be tackling? Now I know what I know. No, they shouldn't. And I wouldn't put my children... That. I want them to do sport, and they do do sport. But because I'm aware of what can happen, and all sports, kids can get injured, but I think there's a bit of a difference between a twisted ankle, banged shoulder, to a brain injury. If you're, talking about, you're talking about contact for yeah. young people, yeah. aren't you? Because yeah. they, can, they can play touch rugby, uh, yeah, or they exactly. can train touch in other rugby, ways. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. And, you know, this, and also there's a multi-skilled sport. You know, rugby, sometimes what happens is they put people in boxes. If you're quite a large child, you're going to be a prop, you can do that. But, you know, it's all about kicking, passing, spatial awareness. So, you know, it's all about playing different sports as well and just enjoying being out and running around. Your, um, I think it was your son, one of your children, um, who was very sweet, who kisses you on the head. Yeah, Sassy, my, um, my five-year-old, um, she came home. That's oh, your daughter, Sassy. Yeah, she, she came home from school and she must have heard some of the parents talking about it when it first happened. And she come and sat on my knee and, she, and she's one of them, you have to earn her love. And she... She sort of looked at me and then she gave me a kiss and then she kissed me on my head. And I said, oh, what's that for, darling? And she went, oh, I've, you've got a poorly head, so I'm going to kiss it better. And it's every single time, bedtime now, she kissed me on the head. And if she's going out, she'll kiss me on the cheek and then she'll kiss me on the head. And she does that every single day when, when I'm with her. And, you, uh, she sounds uh, adorable and children deal with things in their own way. Do you know one of the things I found really surprising in your book? And, and don't take this the wrong way, <laughs> right? So you're a big guy. I'll, I'll worry when someone says no, that, No, no, yeah. no. So you're a big guy, yeah? And I could completely imagine you as a rugby player. Yeah, and I've seen you. I've seen how brilliant you were um, during the World Cup. Um, British roller speed skating champion. All in one like her as well. Do you know, I'm just, I'm just leaving it That's there. That's put you off your breakfast. I, I'm just, uh, Steve, I'm just leaving it yeah, there. Yeah. There's an no. image. I mean, do you have a no, picture? No, you don't get one anywhere. It's perfect. Do I'm they not exist? Really? No, yeah, I'm quite happy with that, yeah. <laughs> you, maybe you could try getting back on the skates. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> it's interesting, you, you were talking about mental health. We, we've got a discussion coming up in a little while, actually. Mm. Fo uh, in football, there's a, 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 you know, a major push to get more people talking about suicide yeah. in young people more generally. It's spearheaded by people involved in football. I'm sure that's something you're 
fully on board. Massively, massively. You know, I've started a new role now with an occupational health company, and you know that's part of that's going to be mental health is a big part. And I, I'm starting to believe and looking in and knowing what I've, I know now, I think with the mental health, a lot of this could come from brain injuries. You know, you think how many people now are skiing, banging their head, not thinking of anything, going to the bar afterwards. They come home, back to work, a few weeks later, and suddenly their emotions start changing, memory starts going a little bit, and they think it's just down to age or something, but it might not have been. It might have been that knock that they've taken. So, we, you know, it's affecting... It's not just sports people, it's affecting a lot of people in their life. Um, so that's why we want to try and make it aware. And, you know, like I said, the mental health is a massive part of it now as well, just trying to get people living life. And, and you know, after COVID, you know, it's, it's quite hard going back into a workplace and everything, but when you anxious like I am, I hate travelling now, I hate going out, it's like a big sort of Steph Blesser, she takes it all on, on her shoulders really most of the time. She's the one that picks me up and she goes, everyone gets to see you looking so good for, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then it's her that gets the exhaust yeah. me all the time that yeah. has to pick me up and, and that, and she's just unbelievable and the whole family are. Really. Well, given what you just said, all the more reason to thank you so much for coming in and, and chatting yeah. with us. Thank you, I appreciate it. And thanks it. to Steph and the family.